Hi everyone, it's Heather. Welcome back into the Paper Castle. As you can see from the title of my video, today it's all about my clunkers and why I love them. And a lot of you might not understand right off the bat why I love them, but um, the main reason is, is because they always teach me something. And in this business, when you're um, you know, buying things to resell, the most important thing is to be constantly, constantly willing to learn about things. You need to learn about you know, what's hot and what's not. And these have taught me a lot about, obviously, what's not hot, but they've also taught me a little bit about uh, things that I should be buying. So if any of you watch um, Castles and Attics channel, he's constantly talking about buying an education, whether it be um, you know buying price guides or books for yourself, you know about certain categories that you're interested in, or subscribing to periodicals. You know you constantly have to be willing to invest some money here and there to learn, and I'm sure with all these TV shows that have popped up like Storage Wars and Pawn Stars and um, American Pickers I'm sure that in cities across the country there are people who are probably charging a couple hundred bucks or more to teach you know classes in how to do what we do and for the most part, I'm sure there's there's probably some people that really know what they're doing out there. But for the most part, this is really a business that you can you know you can teach yourself if you're really passionate about it. That's the thing you have to be really passionate about this. And I am. I just love learning. I love learning about all these things, where they came from, the stories behind them, all of it. Even if I don't sell them, um, like this is a this is a book that I bought. Antique Trader, Antiques and Collectibles. This is a 2009 price guide. I don't have the 2011 price guide. I don't buy every price guide when they come out. You know, I'll just buy one general book. and Maybe a few years from now, you know, I'll get one that's updated. Uh, there are a lot of these around. One's by um, Covell's and what's the other one? Warman's, I think. There's a lot of these price guides out. The reason that I bought this particular one is because it's all pictures and they're all color photographs. There's a lot of these books out there that they'll just have one black and white photograph at the top and then they'll just have this huge list of different things with prices next to them. That for me doesn't do me any good. I'm a very visual person. I need to see things. And I don't buy these things because, you know, I look at all these pictures and I expect to find these at garage sales. I buy these books just to familiarize myself with what might be out there and something that's similar that might be out there. So that's one thing I spend money on. Um, I also I go to the library a lot and get a lot of books for free. Price guides or books on pottery. There's entire books just on marks. You know the marks that are on the bottom of um, pottery or glass or um, silver pieces. It's just nice to um, have, have those resources and, and learn. But um, the clunkers, like I said, are another way to learn. But before I get to my clunkers, I wanted to show you something that just sold in the store. Um, I sold this decanter the other day. have to ship it out today. I paid a dollar for it. It sold for $13.99 or $12.99, sorry sold for $12.99 plus the shipping and it's very hard to see you can see the bird right here it has all these flowers and birds etched on it and that was the reason that I bought it because it was so detailed don't buy a lot of decanters people do people do buy these but um, I just don't buy a lot of them I really don't find a lot of them but this one was unique so that's why I got it <coughs> and then <laughs> Some of you might remember the next thing that I'm going to show you. Um, I was talking a lot to um, Ohio One Treasure Hunter about vintage Christmas stuff because I found ornaments the other day and she just found this really cool Ferris wheel 
um, from like the 60s and um, you know we both share this love of vintage 50s ornaments and this is another one of those things that I love and my husband and my son can't stand and I love him because he's just so ugly that he's cute and he's gonna be I think my new my new mascot here on YouTube but this is creepy Santa cat I mean he just looks like he's possessed by demons or something but I just think he is the coolest thing I got him for a quarter and he was worth every penny because even though he's a Christmas decoration my daughter she keeps him out all year and every once in a while she'll hide him around the house somewhere where she knows my husband's gonna look and then he'll look down and he'll see it and it freaks him out <laughs> so that's worth the 25 cents right there but I love that little thing so now I'm gonna go into the clunkers and why um, I like them. I mean, I you guys all know the story of the coffee mugs. I buy coffee mugs all the time. I buy them because they're dirt cheap. And, you know, I can buy 100 coffee mugs, but I'm never going to sell them all. It's just not going to happen. But, you know, for 10 cents or a quarter or 50 cents, I'll take a chance. And if they sell, great. And if not, they can go to the Salvation Army. And, like I said, I've learned something. I've learned next time if I see the same one, don't buy it and then send it to the Salvation Army and somebody else can benefit from it. So this is a Snickers one that I bought. I bought it because it was a soccer ball and it sat in the store for almost a year and a half and hasn't sold. This is another one I bought, I don't know, probably for like five cents or something. I bought it because it was a shoebox greetings Hallmark mug. Um, it is used in the bottom. You can see all the spoon marks. And that may have been why it didn't sell. That was another clunker. Uh, these Cabbage Patch figurines. You know, when I first started, I thought, you know, oh, these have to sell. These are, you know, these are vintage. These are 1984. And I bought two of these. The other one sold. This one didn't. And I'm not going to give it any more time to sit around taking up space. This little guy I got for about a buck. I think I think it's adorable. 50s vintage um, you know, salt or pepper shaker. They don't have the other one that goes with it. It's marked um, Napco 1956 on the bottom. I have people watching it. I've had a lot of people ask questions about it, but it's just not moving. I've got this little teapot. I bought this because it looked very retro. It's not. It's new. And I knew that when I bought it, but I just like the retro um, decoration on the front. But what I, I didn't realize then was I didn't realize it was a tea for one and there should be a cup attached to this. So it's not complete. So that's why that didn't sell. These two things I got at this garage sale where the woman was practically giving stuff away. I think this was like, I don't know, a dime, maybe. And it's, it's copper. I don't know if it's solid copper. It's pretty heavy. It says PMC on the back. Had some people watching that, but it's not going anywhere. And this little plate I bought mainly because it was marked C. Albrecht on the back. But couldn't find out any information about it. And it's time for it to go. Uh, these next two pieces I bought because they were, whoops, because they were Dansk. And I always say that I buy, you know, anything I can get my hands on that's Danish. And um, we have a Dansk outlet here in our town. But even though this, this did not have the lid, I bought it anyway. But not going anywhere. China sometimes is really hard to sell. I know there are some people on eBay that specialize in, in China, but the problem with it is, is that most of the time no one's going to buy it until they break something that they already have and then they're going to come searching on eBay to find a replacement. And so you're going to have to sit on that inventory for a long time and wait until that person breaks it and then they come and find yours and buy it. So I don't buy a whole lot of 
China anymore. It's another Dansk piece. Again, you know, I thought it would sell, especially because it was it was a real just classic white color with this embossed fruit on it. And fruit is always, you know, pretty popular theme that people use in their kitchens and stuff. But no takers on that. Couple more, couple more coffee mugs that didn't go. This one, I really like this image of Santa on the reindeer. This is um, Royal Norfolk, but he didn't sell. I have sold some of these in the past, just not that one. This is another one I got at um, a church rummage sale. Got it for pennies. I was there on the last day when it was like fill a bag for three dollars or something. So. I bought it because of all the cars. I may actually leave this one in the store until Father's Day because there are a couple people watching it. But if it doesn't sell by then, it's going to go. It's another China piece I bought at a church rummage sale. This I bought because it was Christmas and because it was false craft. But false craft doesn't really sell that well. Certain patterns do which I learned from researching this, but other patterns don't. So most of the time it's really not worth the money. This is a little plush bear that I bought. Bought her for a quarter. I thought she was really cute and she's got this, you know, little Sleeping Beauty kind of princess dress on her. I've had a few watchers, but no one's bought her yet. I do sell the majority of my plush items that I buy but for some reason nobody wanted her and my daughter doesn't like stuffed animals so she doesn't want her either okay this canister I bought this is um, for Knott's Berry Farm I'm sure they were just selling it there and it was full of you know some kind of food cookies or something like that but I bought it because I liked the design on the front and it had all these big strawberries on it and I've sold a lot of strawberry themed things in the past but I've had questions on it and no one's wanted to buy it this is another little tea for one set, this cute little snowman I might actually keep him till Christmas because I, I don't understand why he's not selling because teapots are usually a good seller and some people just specialize in these tea-for-one items. So he might stick around for a little while. But if he doesn't sell by Christmas, he's gone. This is something that I bought really early when I first started on uh, eBay. This is a smelter horse. Smelter is just a fancy word for white metal or, you know, metal that's not bronze. I mean, he's made to look bronze, but he's not. If you scratch this, you can see underneath the metal is a lot lighter color. I have maybe three people watching him, but he's not moving. So it might be time to say bye-bye to him. Okay, this ashtray I bought because it was signed on the back. I was unfamiliar with the name. It says bats right here and it also says bats right here and um, it was cheap so I bought it because one of the things that I've done is you know I see something that's signed and then I go back and forth should I shouldn't I and then I get home and I remember the name and I put it into eBay and if I didn't buy it sometimes I'm kicking myself so that's why I buy these things sometimes because I don't want to regret it later if it's something that I should have bought this is a nice little vase. It's, um, let's see, this was made, I don't have this on macro right now, so that's why it's not focusing right. This was made by the Danbury Mint. It says Royal Tara, Ireland. So I thought Danbury Mint, it was cheap, maybe it'll sell, but not having any luck with that. bought this big vase I think this was maybe three or four dollars but 
I know there's a lot of people that collect Southwest and Native American things, and it, plus it's it's decorated on both sides, two different scenes. I really thought this would sell, but unfortunately, it's just sitting there. And this bowl, even though I didn't sell it, I did learn from it. Um, you can see it's got, well, it's hard to see, but there's, there's seams here, so it's pressed glass. And I found out that when it starts up here with the amber glass and then kind of turns into the red glass, it's called reverse amberina. So see, I did learn something from buying this thing for a dollar. And I thought it was pretty, I thought it would go. Uh, the next thing I bought is these, this set of, um, it's a sugar and creamer set from Sakura. Sakura is a very good name. Figured it was, you know, it was also Christmas and Debbie Mum, but no takers. Um, I did have a salt and pepper set like this. That went right away, but it, the sugar and creamers I don't have too much luck with. That pretty much goes across the board with any kind of sugar and creamer set. This little guy is from Inesco. This little pig, there's a lot of pig collectors. I did have uh, his brother, and he did sell. But for some reason, no one wants this poor little guy. And then I bought this nativity scene. This was probably only a quarter or 50 cents. Um, you know, this was back in the beginning when I was, you know, totally clueless. I mean, I I'm still clueless, but not nearly as clueless as I was a few years ago. I may keep this to put in my daughter's room just because it's, you know, cute with the little, with the little kids. Or it may go to the Salvation Army. I haven't decided yet. This is another piece I bought very cheap. A little turkey. I just liked all the enamel work on it. It looks like it's airbrushed. It's not signed or anything. People were watching that one too. And bought this little set of Christmas plates. These are new. These are from Boston. Boston Warehouse 2007. Just thought they were cute, had a retro kind of feel to them. Well, nobody wants those either. And this I had a lot of interest in, but unfortunately all the interest I had in it was uh, international. And this is heavy. It's all made of sand. Um, it's like carved sand. And it was from Pier 1. I paid a buck for it. And even though I have watchers, it's just, it's time to let it go. But the good thing about this piece was when I opened it, inside uh, where the frame meets the box down here, there was an old Pier 1 gift card stuck in it for 10 bucks, which had not expired. So I got 10 bucks out of the deal. So I kind of did make money on that. bought this piece for a dollar. I figured this would sell just because it was really unusual and garden themed and it had this cool wrought iron thing in front of it. Um, if it were me, I would jazz this part of the frame up because it's kind of boring. <coughs> but just a nice little shadow box. And the next thing is automotive manuals. A lot of auto manual, automotive manuals sell on eBay. My husband's a mechanic. He always tells me to buy them. Um, certain ones sell, other ones don't. But if they're cheap enough, it's worth taking the chance on. And then the rest of these things I want to show you are pictures. Because like I told you guys before, I pretty much stopped buying them. Because um, the market is so flooded with different prints. Uh, it, most of the time it's just not worth it. This is one that I really thought would go. This is really nice accent for a, a little boy's room. It's all embroidered, really nicely done, even has all these hoses on the side. I got it for a buck and I was really kind of surprised that that one didn't go. 
Then I have these two prints that I bought for a dollar. Very beachy themed. There's a lot of cocktail themed things in all the catalogs these days, so that's why I thought they would sell. But no such luck. Then I bought these two, which I thought were interesting because they're um, they're three dimensional. You can see in there, and this one goes with it. And like I said, there's people watching them, but you know, no one no one wants to hit that buy button. And then this is my last one. I did have the matching one to this. And this one is a frustrating story. I bought this and it's mate for a dollar a piece and sold them. Well, they sat and they sat and they sat in the store for probably 15 months. And I was getting ready to, you know, throw in the towel on them. And then one day, one lady came along, she bought one. And the very next day, somebody emailed me and said, Oh, I love this one. Do you have the other one? Like, are you kidding me? I had to email her back and say no, because someone just bought it yesterday. And so then she didn't want it. And somebody just asked me, like, last week, the same question. Oh. It's kind of bummed about that. And the very last thing that I'm going to show you guys, and I, I can't for the life of me figure out why this didn't sell. But I found this really nice teapot. Just really nice colors, really nice um, hand painted decoration on it. It's a Gibson Elite from Claire Murray. And I figured there's so many teapot collectors that would go, but that one I can't figure out. That one's got me stumped. And I do have the cream and sugar for it too. But I can kind of understand why these didn't go, but not this. But I have learned through all these items, obviously not to buy any of them ever again, but with some of them, you can learn, like with the Cabbage Patch figurine. You know, you might plug that in and find out that that particular one doesn't sell, but by doing the research, you might find that another one sells really well. So then you'll know later on to keep your eye out for that one. So that is why you should never, you know, hate the clunkers embrace them because <laughs> you do really really learn a lot so um, thanks for watching everyone I know I babbled on again for a long time but I really wanted you guys to learn about these because these are just as important as the uh, the things that do sell well so thanks for watching everyone I hope you all have a, a great day and I'll talk to you soon bye